Hi, my name is John Harrington, and I'm a professional photographer, filmmaker, author, and I'm also a small business owner. And I, like many of you, were greatly impacted by this COVID-19 crisis. So I was very excited on March 29th when the Small Business Administration put out an announcement about the economic injury disaster loan process. I was a little skeptical. I didn't think it would go through. I didn't know how, how fortunate I might be to get, get anything from the Small Business Administration. But the next day, March 30th, I applied. I was uh, very hopeful that something might come through. And one of the things that struck me about the EIDL loan was that you could request a loan for up to $200,000 with nothing more than a personal guarantee. You didn't need to put up any collateral or do a lot of paperwork. They just wanted to do a credit check. And all of this would come through the Small Business Administration. And even a bankruptcy wouldn't impact your application, provided you could say who you say, provided you could prove who you said you were. So when I went through that process on the 30th of March, I was hopeful. They didn't ask for a lot of information, but they did ask for my banking information in the event that I would get the immediate loan uh, advance of 10, up to $10,000. And so I was hopeful when that process went through. On the 13th of April, about 13 days later, I got an email from the Small Business Administration. Uh, then on the 16th of April, I got an, an, another notice from the Small Business Administration saying that that loan, the, the funding had lapsed and so that they were going to do what they could. But I, I was really kind of discouraged at that point. But then somehow or another, on April 20th, 20 days later, I did finally get a thousand dollar advance on the EIDL, which told me that I was in the EIDL system. So when I received the EIDL advance of $1,000 direct deposited into my bank account, I wondered, well, what would the next steps be? Well, on May 2nd, that would be a, a full 32 days later, I got a notice from the Small Business Administration saying that they were going to be letting me know what those next steps were. So when I got the email from the Small Business Administration on May 12th, 42 days later, I jumped on it. I went through the process of filling out what little information they were asking me for in order to actually complete the processing of my EIDL loan. So let me walk you through that process and show you how simple it was and kind of what you can expect if you too are waiting for the SBA to get back to you with the status of your EIDL request. Now, it's, other than an agricultural business, it's the process of getting an EIDL loan is over. You can't actually apply for them anymore, at least as of right now. Uh, so this is for people that have already applied for the EIDL, may have gotten that EIDL advance, and are looking and trying to understand what's going to happen next. So let me walk you through those processes. First, this is what I saw when I submitted my application on the SBA website. This is the letter that I got from the Small Business Administration reaffirming that I'm an applicant for the EIDL loan and giving me some details and some background on the program. You'll see here this is different from the Paycheck Protection Program. This is the full EIDL loan. Now the bottom of the email here shows that you can request a loan of up to $2 million. The interest rate on that is 3.75%. The term of that loan would be 30 years, but you don't actually have to start paying it back for a full 12 months. This was a very attractive thing for me, so I was very hopeful that I might actually get the EIDL. Again, while many people were probably looking for a large number, I wasn't. I was going to be looking for something under that $200,000 cap that meant that I could just use a personal guarantee. I didn't need to fill out a lot of paperwork or provide a lot of documentation. This is the notice that I got from the Small Business Administration on April 16th talking about the lapse in appropriations. They had so many, as you all well know, applications and but it does say and this was that glimmer of hope applicants who've already submitted their applications will continue to be processed on a first come first served basis and i thought i had a pretty good shot at it given that my application was submitted a day later i was on march 30th so i was hopeful that this meant that i would have been one of those first folks to actually get the eidl or be able to actually apply for it on May 2nd, late in the evening, this is the letter that I got from the SBA, which talked about the fact that my application is currently being processed in, order, in the order that was received. Now, I was very hopeful. This gave me some hope. Uh, and I told, it told me that I'd get an email notification when there was a change in my application status. So at 9.32 in the evening on May 12th, some 42 days after I had actually applied for the EID alone, this is what I got first, an email from the SBA telling me that I needed to log into the SBA and create an account. This is my first opportunity to really create an account and maybe give some additional information to the SBA. So once I clicked create account, it auto-populated my email address from the email that it had sent me and asked me to create and choose a password and reconfirm the password. 
All I, that's all I had to do in order to actually create the account. Once I created the account, this is the next screen that I was met with. On the status, it said, you're eligible. Please review the loan amount. And on the left-hand side, you can see where it says, right here, you can see where it says, review and accept the amount. Now, when I clicked on review and accept the amount, this screen came up. And this screen allowed me to modify my loan amount from anywhere from $1,000 up to the cap that they had provided for me, which was significantly less than the $200,000 maximum, but it certainly was a number that would work for me if I was in fact going to get it. And every indication was that I was going to get it. It also broke down the loan breakdown, reiterated here that it's 30 years, 3.75% interest rate, monthly payments. The repayment started 12 months after closing, $100 to process the and file it, and then it showed me what my monthly payment would be. All I had to do here was click the accept button. And when I click the accept button, I came back to this screen and you can see there that now it says status amount confirmed. And I of course can go back and change the amount if I need to or want to. The next steps that I had to complete were to verify my identity. So I click continue under verify identity. It came up and asked me to answer several fairly simple questions about who I was that would be information generally known only to me. Uh, the county that I lived in, uh, it asked me some information about um, my residence. It asked me in what city the street that I'm on was. And it asked me what month that I was born. And once I answered those questions, all I had to do was click on submit answers. And I come back and it says, great, we've verified your identity. I clicked continue. So what you can see now, I come back to this main admin screen. You can see that I've confirmed the amount that I would like my loan to be. I've verified my identity here because it says electronic disbursement completed. That's a demonstration that I had actually gone in and, and submitted my banking information when I applied for the EIDL. And I have in fact received that, that uh, advance on the EIDL uh, for that amount. And so I could of course here, if I wanted to go in and edit that information, I did not. So with that, what I did next was I clicked on the button that said submit for processing up under status. It then says this will submit your application for processing. I clicked submit. And now the status box there says your application is being processed. So you can see right there it says your application is being processed. Now the next step, the last step I believe will be for me to sign those loan closing documents. You see that last step now there at the bottom has been added that says sign closing documents. It has not been started. And as soon as the process is complete of them reviewing that information, I'll be able to click start. And I believe that it'll be fairly simple and straightforward process to click sign closing documents. I believe it'll be an electronic signature. And then in a period of time following that, I should be fortunate enough to get a uh, deposit into my bank account of that amount. Now, that being said, I also, I also did not get an email from the SBA confirming that I'd done any of these things. There was no follow on email. So at this point, my, I expect that I'll be getting an email from them when they're ready for me to sign those closing documents. But that was a pretty simple and straightforward process for when I was when when you're doing a loan that's under that $200,000 figure. So that's how simple the process was to go through it on the SBA website. Sure, it took 42 days from when I submitted my application to when I was able to complete those steps and submit it for processing. I'm hopeful that it won't take another 42 days before the actual signing of those closing documents occurs and that money hits my bank account. But hopefully that will kind of take away some mystery for you of what the process is involved for doing an EIDL loan. Thanks for watching.